All right, let's get moving. Listen, uh, um, welcome to uh, Thursday, April 8th, uh, MSYSA uh, webinar. We put this on uh, basically about every month now uh, for our, our uh, affiliates. And we always like to bring in a guest speaker. Today, we have a real, a real surprise because uh, uh, we have a Bill Taylor who's going to be joining us in just a few moments. His daughter's getting married and the, and the dinner's tonight. So we can't keep him too long, but he was gracious enough to join us, which is ex excellent. And he'll, he's the newly elected president of U.S. soccer, which for most people out there who know anything about it, that's a big deal. And Maryland supported Bill throughout the whole uh, uh, transformation from, uh, from uh, politicking all the way to the election. We felt that Bill was the best voice for youth soccer at the Federation, and we feel really good about it. And the little transactions that we've had with Bill over the month or so uh, proved us, uh, proved it correct, because we really enjoy talking with him. He's a great guy, and we feel that the Federation is a little bit wavering right now. And I think a guy like Bill is going to, to be able to help youth soccer and the Federation find uh, their ground and, and move forward. So briefly, everybody should know that MSYSA is, a, is an association that's here for you. And if you look at the screen, you'll see that you know our, our foundation is education, promotion, support, and provide numerous different benefits to be uh, a MSYSA member. Uh, our association is engaged, it's determined, and it's outward thinking that we want to be the best state. Our goal is to be the best state association that we can be. I'm not gonna sit here and say we wanna be number one in the whole country, but most people who know Maryland know that we're, we're definitely in the top 10% uh, uh, of state associations, not necessarily in size, but just in professional uh, programming, professional staff, awesome board, engagement all the way through. And uh, I think everybody knows that MSYSA has a mission and the mission is to always support and to grow youth soccer in our state and help, and we, we're always happy to help other states too. Another quick reminder that this webinar is being recorded. So if you, if you don't have an opportunity to be with us tonight, uh, you can always uh, uh, have your friends or, or uh, other affiliates join on our website and, and watch it at your leisure. So a uh, couple quick guidelines before I move on. Uh, please be respectful if you have a question please identify yourself and your affiliation. And uh, with that being said, I'd like to bring on uh, Dr. Bill Taylor, Vice President of U.S. Soccer. Thanks so much, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, far kinder words than uh, needed to be said, but I, I appreciate any positivity because uh, I think we get darts thrown at us most of the time. Once, I, once I'm uh, on the board for a little while, I pretty much will be another picture on the dartboard, I think. <laughs> I'm hoping to stay off the dartboard. Um, with that being said, um, I, the, the audience, obviously, I don't know, you know how, how closely many, many of you follow the election, so I don't want to go you know, repeat too much of my background and things that, that you may have already uh, known, um, but in brief, um, uh, I'll give you the, the real high level highlights of where I came from. Uh, I was born and raised on, on Maui, um, came from playing youth soccer there uh, from the time I was five, uh, ended up going to Utah, attended, um, played club soccer throughout uh, high school and high school soccer, as well as then uh, played club soccer uh, through college because uh, BYU lost their title uh, through Title IX, lost their D1 status a couple of years before I entered. So. Uh, it was, uh, it was a little, that was a difficult time for me. Um, but needless to say, I played through college in any way and, um, uh, graduated with a business finance degree, uh, decided to go on to uh, medical school and attended New York medical college. Um, and after, after, uh, medical school went on to do a residency in radiology at Duke university. Um, and I did a subspecialty in neuroradiology. 
uh, from there, and then subsequently moved to Boise, Idaho, to start a pri to start in a private practice, um, and have been working and uh, moved out here in 2004, and I've been in private practice for uh, the last 16, 17 years. Um, it, the soccer side of things, as I, you know, I, I've been playing all the way through. I still play today, um, men's league soccer, uh, and and been involved um, with my playing side of it because I really love the game. Um, but other, other, outside of that, I started coaching uh, quite heavily once I moved to Boise and had enough time to breathe again after the medical residency and stuff was done and my kids were starting to grow up. Uh, coached club soccer. I realized that there was a licensing program. I went through US, USSF licensing. I, 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 in, over the first six years of coaching, I got my A license. Um, and, and really, the, the coaching side of my uh my soccer life really drove uh, the impetus to, to enter into the political side. Uh, there was a unique opportunity to run for president of Idaho Youth Soccer back in, I don't know, 2006, I think. And I ran and I was fortunate enough to win that election. So I, I was president of, I've been president of Idaho Youth Soccer uh, for the last decade. Um, during that time, uh, I was going to meetings and watching kind of U.S. youth soccer and, and the Federation for that matter, it just seemed like I would go to meeting after meeting and it just kind of felt like we were spinning our wheels over the same topics every year. Um, and that kind of drove me to want to try and do something different. Um, I went to Pete Zofi a few years ago and, and he was kind enough to allow me to start a new committee called the Organizational Growth Committee where we wanted to try and do something unique um, and different. Um, and I crossed over with the other member organizations. I brought in athletes from the Athletes Council uh, with Yael Averbush and Brian Ching, Chris Ahrens. Uh, we brought in uh, the MLS onto it with Fred Lipka and Gordon Benson. Um, we had private business uh, uh, people on, on, our, on our committee, as well as several executive directors and, and, and presidents of various USYS states. So it was a very good a mix of people and we wanted to be innovative. And so one of the things we wanted to do was to, um, to obviously grow the game. And we came up with several initiatives. One was called the GRIP project, the growth retention project, where we used data that we have in our registration data and we combined it with census data to help clubs. Um, and hopefully over this next year, actually over this next year, Maryland will be able to, and, and all the clubs within Maryland's organization will have access to this GRIP project, GRIP reports. Um, that you'll be able to drill right down to player to to individual teams. You'll be able to see the statistics of where your players are coming from, where opportunities are, why where players leave, where they go to, within the state, outside the state, new players coming in, and it, it will be a very powerful tool and resource for Maryland youth soccer to be able to assist and be a consultant to the clubs locally. So that was one project that I'm really proud of that that seems to be. Um, embraced by many of the states thus far and it's going to grow. Uh, the next part of it was to be able to bring the pro and the youth landscape together for the first time. Um, spent over a year and a half working with the MLS to really bring them across the table. We were able to sign an MOU with them finally um, in scouting and identification. COVID hit, we weren't able to, it's all in place ready to go and we anticipate it will be uh, started this October or this fall. Um, in, in that scouting and ID process. And um, Greg and the ODP staff and other people will be able to, will, will give you updates and educate you on, on that process. But that's a really exciting uh, crossover with the MLS. Um, secondarily, uh, we were able to uh, link hands with the, the Girls Academy and other, other sides of, of, of the youth landscape. Um, Finally, the, the last piece that I think and kind of touches on the part that is at the end, um, it's just growing the game. Is a, is a project that I'm really excited about. And I think that, that all the states um, and clubs, all, everyone actually, for that matter, I don't think anyone won't be touched by this particular project, which is the soccer in school. Um, I'm really uh, passionate about this particular project. And I think that it um, will have a tremendous amount of synergy in a time when our Federation is going through some difficulties as we all know, um, but actually focus us on for the first time that I can't remember a time where we've actually focused on truly growing the game. Uh, we've been stagnant as, an, as in the youth landscape for 20 years now. And I think that by, uh, the, in, in real basic terms, we wanna go in and educate PE teachers, allow those PE teachers to then in, uh, from kindergarten through say elementary, through your elementary school years primarily. Um, and in, basically just throw a broad net over 
the school system with futsal, not worrying about every technical detail, not worrying about registration or any of that. We just worry about exposure. We want to just expose kids to the game at a young age through the school system. Uh, we can do it very inexpensively, um, but uh, the program is just going to, I think we're going to get a lot of buy-in from the Federation on this. Um, I think that there are a lot of, I think every organization is going to want to have a piece of this and want to be a part of it because it's going to really rise all boats. It's one of those things. Definitely. You know, you hear that cliche all the time, but this is definitely one that I believe will do that. So with that being said, that's kind of a really quick overview of where, where we are and, and what I've, what initially that I've been doing in the, in the immediate past. And now, you know, as I'm now entering into the vice presidency and I really appreciate Marilyn's support, um, Mark and Greg were great. Um, and, you know, giving me advice as we went through this and we're very supportive in the east side of things um, with the region as well. Um, and I, I'm, I'm always open to phone calls and conversations. They know they can call me anytime. And I think having that communication is important because um, I think too often when you get on the board, um, you kind of forget about where you came from and I'm not anticipating that that's the way I'll function. So um, I really appreciate having a link and I feel at home when I'm speaking to people like yourselves. I feel like I'm a part of you. Um, I, I coach in it every day. I, I, I love the game and I love the kids. And I want to try and keep my focus on changing the direction of the Federation's mentality from just the elite uh, national team level. Um, qualifying for World Cups are very important for us and they drive a lot of revenue for us, obviously. But but I want to kind of pivot us a little bit differently than we have been in the past. So Mark and Greg, I'll, I'll kind of leave it that and questions or anything you guys want to add, I'm, I'm happy to speak to. By the way, I love Duke. I spent four years. I didn't go there, but my son went there and I uh, loved hanging down there with him. You got, you got the right color blue then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cause, cause there are definitely two colors of blue, but really only one. Yes. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, Bill, I got, a, I got a quick question for you. Thank you so much uh, for coming on and for being a true ambassador for the game. And you notice uh, where our priorities lie. Just looking at the slide deck, it is all about the kids. It's all about growing that game. So it's so great to hear that uh, from you as well. Could you just maybe touch on some of the current priorities uh, for the Soccer Federation and what we as member state associations and all of our clubs and leagues might be able to do uh, to join and to collaborate and to work together uh, to further those priorities? Yeah, you know, we, in the immediate term, we have a couple of, you know, the house, the house is on fire a little bit, right? We'll be coming for a couple of reasons. I mean, we have, we have the, the pandemic that uh, financial, we have financial issues that we have to overcome immediately, um, which is mainly getting fans back into the seats and being able to um, fill our stadiums again, which is a huge revenue generation. Because right now, our, I mean, everyone has access to our, our current, our, our most recent budget from the AGM. And uh, you can see that we're in a massive deficit spending cycle of greater than $40 million a year. And we're going to spend down our, our reserves quite quickly. Um, so we have, we have a lot of work to do on that. We have a lot of contract negotiations that are ongoing right now. In fact, this is a big year for our commercial agreements, TV agreements, um, uh, our collective bargaining agreements with the men's and women's national teams are ongoing this year. So this is a massive year for us um, as far as uh, financially. And so that will, that will be a, um, a big part of what we have to do as a board. Um, from the state side of it, from the youth landscape, I think that the thing that's going to be most important to you is the governance structure that's in front of us, right? We, that's uh, if if you're a club that's not not aware of it, we have uh, governance issues that are probably the largest bylaw changes in the history of U.S. soccer since the changing of the board structure back in 1998, I believe it was. Um, so we've been fairly stable with the board structure and stable with membership voting. Uh, uh, percentages uh, from the membership for the last 25 years, uh, but now Congress has passed a law that's, uh, the, that states that the athletes are going to move from 20% to 33%, uh, the Ted Stevens Act. Um, that's caused a significant um, concern on the part of the youth and the adult grassroots side, and it's really polarized the Federation to a certain degree. Um, and we're, you know, we're going to have to deal with 
those differences that are coming through. And, and the most important thing is that we have good representation from each of the members as we enter into these negotiations, because that's what's next. Um, in order for the bylaws to pass, you have to have 66%, uh, 67% of the membership uh, vote for that and pass it. And right now that's, we're nowhere near that. So we need to come to the table with each other. We need the youth, the adults, the, the pro council and the athletes to be at the table with each other. And uh, Cindy is in the process of working with um, the member organizations to put together uh, this group of people that will uh, hopefully uh, come together and, and, and create something that everyone can come to an agreement on that is good for the Federation moving forward. I think that I tend to look at things optimistically. Uh, a lot of people are looking at it in a very negative way, but I, I, I believe that we will find a path forward and I believe that the path forward will be better than the path we're currently on. So I, we, we have, that's gonna, that's a process that will take up, I think several months of this year. The, the hope, you know, some people, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a deadline of December 31st to have these things resolved. I don't think that that's a hard deadline. I think that uh, there may be some wiggle room with that, but the USOPC uh, that governs, uh, you, the, the Olympic body that governs our national governing body, um, has that date in place. And, you know, right now that's, that's what we are by law, we're supposed to have to meet, but, um, obviously the lawyers in the room, um, will deal with some of those issues as we get closer. So with that being said, I think that, uh, those are things that are, on, that are going to consume a lot of time and effort and will lay a foundation for us moving forward long-term, um, from the state perspective, I think, you know, um, supporting Mark and Greg as they um, give opinions to those leaders that because I don't know who's going to uh, who's who are who the people are that are going to be on that committee that's going to be decided probably in the next month I think but it's going to be important for the states to stay engaged with the leadership that's on that committee whoever those representatives are to make sure your voice is heard to make sure that your opinions um, are front and center and it's not a time to be passive uh, it's a time to be very active in the in the governance structure um, so that your voice is heard. Um, my role is to make sure I don't have a voting role in that process, but I have a voice at the table. Um, and I think that hopefully that voice will be something that will uh, represent the people that that put me in in the seat that I'm in. Right. I think that's important. Um, and I, I think it's important for us to have uh, the youth landscape, um, the grassroots need to have a, need to have a voice um, and need to have representation. So um, that's that's part of the part of what's going on in the background. I don't know, Greg, if I've answered that fully, but uh, feel free oh, to add in. To that was good, and thank you so much. What I heard is you have a lot of legalities to work through, and uh, we'll we'll focus on growing the game, and you'll get all the legalities straight, and uh, we'll meet in the middle. So that'll be good. Last question, Bill, before you go, because I don't want to keep you. I want you to go back with your family. <laughs> Have you had your first meeting with U.S. Soccer yet? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, it was um, it, it wasn't us. Our first real, probably real board meeting that would be is going to be April twenty first, and okay. I actually get onboarded on like the nineteenth, like a full onboarding, like eight nine hours of of onboarding. Um, so. That, that we had a board meeting before that because of these bylaw issues that kind of got pushed on to us. And so we did have a, a board meeting surrounding just that topic, but not a board meeting in, in general, not, not a typical board meeting. So, yeah. Well, enjoy your first one. Yeah, it's, it, it, I thought, you know, I'd have a couple meetings where I could kind of just sit back, listen and be a passive, you know, get to get to know people and and get a feel of the roast but i after that first board meeting that i had i realized that that's not an option um we have too much right in front of us for you know i i don't you don't have that luxury to sit back we're not in that kind of stability in the federation at this moment so i think i'm gonna i, I know i'm gonna have to be an active role and uh, an active voice uh rather than one that just sits back and listens all right, so listen, we really appreciate, I'm going to kick you off because I don't want you to feel that you're obligated to hang out with us. But we well, I would, I'd rather, I'd almost rather because because <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of stuff going on outside my outside of this room right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, enjoy your evening. Thank you. Enjoy the moment with the family and we're going to have you back on another time. Please do. Um, never hesitate. I know you, you have access to me. Um, I'm pretty responsive. Um, do my best to answer the questions that come to me whenever, whenever needed. So um, 
I appreciate you guys taking time to let me talk to you for a few minutes, Mark and, and Greg. Thanks so much. And thanks. Everyone, thanks, Bill. Talk have to fun. you soon. Bye. Okay, that was nice. Now then, uh, next up on our uh, ticket is Greg Smith, Executive Director. He's, he, uh, as many of you probably already know, the, the association has been humming over the last couple of months. A lot of things are going, a lot of things. There's a lot of engagement. And, you know, we owe it to uh, Greg Smith because he's, uh, in my world, we call him a doer. He's definitely a doer. And uh, we're, we're really happy. Greg? Thanks, Mark. And uh, again, it's absolutely a team effort. Well, uh, I appreciate the kind words. It's nothing that we do is done by one person. It takes all of us working together and uh, put out on LinkedIn today just how uh, happy and proud I am to be working with such a great team in the office, but that certainly extends to uh, everyone on the board and, and everyone else who's, who's involved. So thank you for that. Just wanted to touch on a few things here tonight. I know we don't have a large number on the webinar, but certainly there'll be uh, many who will watch on demand. Uh, for anyone who watches this before April the 16th, if you haven't yet submitted a grant uh, request or a grant application for your club, please do. Uh, there are significant dollars that are available that the board has allocated to be used to grow the game and to increase access uh, for people to the game of soccer here in Maryland and DC. So please do go to our website. I think I actually sent out an email today with a reminder uh, as well. Please fill that out. If you don't fill it out and send it in, we, we don't even have an opportunity to try to help and we absolutely want to. Uh, same for scholarships. Those are on a rolling basis. Uh, Trish is on. She chairs the Grants and Scholarships Committee and they actually just awarded out thousands of dollars and there are many more thousands of dollars available. So please spread the word. We want to help and we want to do all that we can to grow the game. Uh, the next bullet here is fundraising. I think I have another slide here. Uh, for fundraising, uh, what this really means is that as an association, we're going to be actively reaching out into the community, not necessarily uh, within our membership ranks, although we will certainly communicate, uh, but more so within the community at large as far as businesses are concerned and people in the community who maybe don't even have uh, children playing the game or maybe aren't even involved, but that want to contribute financially to helping to further our mission of growing the game. Uh, we're gonna be putting out a, a campaign looking to raise some funds. And at the moment that's scheduled to launch next week on Tuesday. So keep your eyes open uh, for that. We're kind of putting together the final pieces right now. And then on the heels of that, we'll start working on uh, the strategic plan that we've been kind of talking about for a little while now, it's designed to run uh, beginning in 22 all the way through the conclusion of the World Cup in 26. So it'll be a five year strategic plan, again, building up to uh, that incredible World Cup that we'll be hosting here in this country along with Canada and Mexico. And uh, it just so happens to be that 26 will be our 50 year anniversary as well. So it's a lot of excitement around that, a lot of excitement around the future and where we're going. But so again, if, if you haven't, please do apply for the grants and scholarships. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, let us know. Uh, but those are some of the, the bigger, larger items that will be coming up and being uh, sent out in the very near future. If there are any questions, uh, let me know. And if not, we'll keep on moving. As I look around at this, uh participation it basically looks like a board meeting <laughs> we got a two honorary board members on the call right now jason and what's the guy's name over there <laughs> it's jeremy wedlake from from severna park no 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 there was another guy i'm talking about <laughs> he's talking about me probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so next Anyway, welcome for, you know, we, we tried to do a webinar in the evening because we weren't satisfied with 35 people attending the Friday uh, morning webinars at 11 o'clock. So we thought, wow, let's do an evening webinar. We probably will double it. But of course, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, it, actually, it actually worked against us. My guess is a lot of people are out on the field practicing and you know, doing soccer drills and training and team and ODP and a lot of these other stuff. And 
you know, they you've can't. also got high school games going on literally right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, we probably, uh, we probably will reconsider and probably have to go back to the daytime because that's probably the better, you know, the, listen, there, in the beginning of the webinars, if you guys remember, for those that were on, we got over at the first couple of weeks, we got over a hundred people. It was pretty amazing. And then it, as, as the information started dwindling and we didn't, you know, it was basically, you know, COVID is COVID. Everybody was used to it by then. Everybody kind of like filtered away. And we had a couple, we had a couple veterans that were with us like Dan and Julio was always on the call. My guess is he's training too. And, and, uh, uh, we always try to provide the best uh, information that we can during COVID. The good news is, and I, I think Lori's on, uh, one of her questions was, is Montgomery County still, uh, and then I will go, and it will go into Nathan next, but I just wanted to bring this up. You know, is Montgomery County still ordering the players to play with masks? And unfortunately, uh, Lori, if you're still on, that is correct. It's, it's you know, it's we're we're not happy about it. I think it's the only jurisdiction in Maryland that's enforcing that. That's why Brad Roos is pulling his hair out doing all the state cup games in other counties in Maryland, which is a nightmare because it's really at this point of state cup, everything is usually at the soccer plex by now. So it's real easy. It's under one roof and it's really easy to manage and it's easy to get uh, volunteers and board members to man the games but now we have four games over here and two over here and one over here it's very it's very uh, uh aggravating for brad and and you know the the state cup people but he's getting it done which is uh, an incredible feat it really is so up next is nathan meadows nathan uh, i'm not sure if most of you know, Nathan uh, has switched gears since since the new leadership at MSYSA, and he is now the director of outreach and grassroots, which is the number one mission that this association has taken uh, under our wings as of today, as of January one. There's nothing more important to us than than Nathan's position going out and trying to uh, create a, a tool or tools to help facilitate the underserved in Maryland. It's, it's a feat that we're taking on 100%. We have total support from the staff and the board and it's our mission and our le legacy is to pull this off. We have great people working behind the scenes. We have uh, Bill Heiser, who's, in, who's vice president of recreation who's leading the charge. We got Nathan who's leading the charge. We got Greg Smith. We got a committee of really good rec people, not from the, the, not from the board, from the, across the state of Maryland. We have so many volunteers because this is an important issue for all of us. So with that being said, Nathan's gonna give us a little report about what he's been doing and then talk about top soccer. Awesome. Well, good evening, everybody. Um... This is definitely a very exciting time, and I can genuinely say that I am thrilled uh, with my new position and this opportunity to really help grow the game at the rec and grassroots level. I think we're all keenly aware that the overwhelming majority of people that play the game of soccer play the game in the non-travel soccer world. And yet there are still, certainly in Maryland, hundreds of thousands of kids that don't get to participate in the game. And of course, across the country, um, millions of children. And so my role is to engage us in conversations and those are happening on a daily basis, not only with clubs and affiliates, but with community partners and, and people that have access, um, whether it be in Baltimore City, whether it be in Washington County, whether, wherever it might be, um, with a particular focus for us for sure, um, in those communities that are currently underserved, where soccer opportunities are maybe a little bit thin, um, and even in places where the soccer opportunities may be vast, Montgomery counties, Howard counties, those kind of places, um, there are still many, many students that 
and athletes that don't get the opportunity to participate. And so one of our goals certainly is to move from the traditional model where it is, let's build a club and let's get the kids to come to our club. Rather, let's say, how can we bring the game to the kids? And so we want to start looking at how we can get into schools and how we can bring soccer to the community rather than expecting the community to come to us. Um, so that's a big focus and lots of ongoing conversations with regards to that. When we think about um, underserved communities, it, I would certainly say that it's very common that the first things people think of when they think of underserved communities is lower income um, communities where they maybe don't have the financial resources. And that is a huge barrier to participation in the, in the game of soccer. Um, often we speak about communities that are, are full of brown and black people um, as being underserved and under-resourced as well. And those are all very, very true. And another area that we don't often think about is athletes with disabilities. They are tremendously underserved um, community and that's where the top soccer program comes into play. Top soccer, if you're not aware, is USU soccer's um, community-based training, soccer training program for kids of basically any age um, that have any kind of mental or physical disability. And um, it's a real focus of ours as well to try to um, improve that and to increase the number of top soccer programs that we have running across the state. Um, up until recently, we had one program running in um, La Plata. Um, I believe MSI has a program that's running, but I'm very excited that just in the last month, we have added two new programs. DC Started is starting a top soccer program and Elite Soccer Development, Elite Soccer Youth Development Academy, I always get their, their name wrong, is coming under the top soccer banner also. So that's super, super exciting. And really I, what I wanna share with everybody tonight is that we would love to see clubs across the state in DC starting top soccer programs. MSYSA um, has completely free coach education and coach training for coaches to be able to work um, with athletes with disabilities. The top soccer program, they consider their little secret source to their program is their buddies. Um, so the buddies system within top soccer is basically they bring in high school students or other players that might be already at your club to come alongside the athletes with disabilities to really help them to navigate the program. Often it's a one-on-one -on -one mentoring situation. It's a great leadership opportunity for these students. And it's also a fantastic opportunity for them to gain their student service learning hours, which most all high school students in this state of Maryland have to, have to get. MSYSA is, is supporting that training, training for buddies, training for coaches. Um, there are resources that are being allocated to um, people that want to start top soccer programs. USU Soccer is committed to the top soccer environment and is bringing out new training resources and new opportunities to network with people that have expertise in, in that world and, and in that space, working with athletes with disabilities. So we're excited about the two that have just come on this, this past month. And, and really the goal is to see many of our clubs starting programs. I'm sure some of you have maybe even already had experiences where maybe you had to turn a child away because you just didn't have the capacity um, for them to be included within your regular soccer programming. And so we want to um, get these top soccer programs started up. I would love to speak to you if that's of any interest to you whatsoever, my email is right there on the screen, outreach at msysa.org. You can check out our website. We have a whole bunch of resources that have just been posted in the last couple of weeks um, with regards to the Top Soccer Program, actual resources that help to train and educate um, in working with kids with autism and working with kids that might have physical disabilities, um, those kinds of things. I think it's a really critical and important group of kids. Um, it's been reported that there are 70,000 plus children just in the state of Maryland um, that have a reported disability and very, very few of them get to actually participate in the game. And tomorrow afternoon, actually, I have a meeting with some key players in the Special Olympics of Maryland to see if we can build a strategic partnership to really meld our worlds together and see how we can um, 
basically it'll give more and more opportunity to these kids that are that are often forgotten and you know left by the wayside when we think about underserved communities so that's kind of my spiel there please reach out to me i'd love to engage in a conversation about getting some more programs started um yeah let's move forward with that thank you nathan 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 <laughs> <laughs> My neighbor's uh, Nathan and you're Nathan. So as I said earlier, it's been a real challenge. Uh, and I, and, I, and what I'm going to say now is is 100 percent spot on. No one could have pulled off Maryland State Cup other than no one but Brad Roos. I'm telling you, because we the challenges that that Montgomery County put on our state because we have a large contingency in Montgomery County and they have, you know, the soccer plex, which was our tool. Hold on. So can someone mute him? Whoever I muted him. Oh, I muted Julio. Him. Okay. Uh, see, he's probably on the field. Um, because of the challenge that they, that uh, Montgomery County put on Brad and the state cup committee and the state office, Brad had to scramble, and, and, and that word is the exact word, scramble to find fields all over Maryland to pull it off. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had a state cup. Maryland would have been dead in the water. So, you know, we really appreciate your efforts, Brad. And uh, so Brad's going to give us a quick update of where we are and uh, where we're going. So, Mark, thank you. That was that was quite an introduction, but thank you again. And I, I want to say first, <clears throat> um, if if some of you are not aware of it, Nathan is a perfect person for the position of the outreach and working with underserved youth and developing the game in Maryland because he has a he has a real heart for it. He has he has a real interest in it, and he's going to do a phenomenal job. So. Um, kudos to him, and if and again, as he said, if you have anything related to that, get in touch with him. He's great about getting back to, and he's uh, definitely someone that um, will do great in that position. Um, as far as cups, I was going to do something different. Like I saw Lori Halpern was on was on the call, but she's dropped off now. I was going to let her know when her cup game was next Saturday, which she's probably dying to know. So we're going to miss that. Um, we have a lot of board members on, so I'll just remind you all that whatever you can do to help um, as far as being at a game site and being the MSYSA representative there um, would be really helpful. I think a lot of you don't realize, and Mark and I have had this discussion a lot, a lot of you probably may not realize how important to the teams it is when we have someone at the games from MSYSA. Um, not, just, not just to to make sure everything goes okay, but they, they just like us there to kind of support them and, and show that we really care about what they're all about. Um, so if you can volunteer for a game or two, um, that would be great. We've basically the 15 through 18, all of their uh, playing games in their round of 16 games have either been completed or are scheduled, which really was difficult. The problem with that is, is that we really have not been able to play any games in Montgomery County. So those teams have really had a difficult time. They've had to do a lot of traveling. Um, second, secondly is we've, we've had great response from the clubs and the teams about finding fields for the games. The problem is there's a lot of single games. Why is that an issue? It's an issue for MSYSA representation. It's an issue and I think Mark and Greg have probably talked to you all about this, is that the, the referee registration in this country is not just down, but way down. And so I feel badly that I'm putting a strain on them for all these single games. Starting with this weekend, though, we are assigning the games. And, and basically what that means is for the 12 through 14s, I've basically gone out in the state, found uh, locations and then I'm putting back to back to back to back games, which is, is much better than it's been in the past. 
Um, we have been delayed a little bit in getting the schedules out. I apologize about that, but I've been trying to wait to see if the soccer plex in Montgomery County will change because it's so much easier if it's at one location instead of being spread out like we are now. Um, I'll continue to monitor that situation. Right now, I have all the games scheduled for this weekend, which is 12 through 14 girls. Uh, round of 16, I have all the boys games scheduled for next week, which is the round of 16, 12 through 14. The weekend of April 24th and 25th, we are scheduled to do the round robin weekend for the girls. I can tell you that if we do not have the soccer plex by that weekend, we are going to have to adjust the, the um, process that we're using for the Cups this year, and that we will probably have to go back to complete single elimination for all, uh, for all um, um, uh, rounds. So what that would mean is that the quarterfinal round, instead of being a round robin of three games each for every team, it would be single elimination like it is in the round of 16 semis and finals. I don't want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, our soccer is really good in, in Maryland, and I want to make sure we send the best teams to regionals. And whether you agree or not, if you have a quarterfinal round where you take the top two teams from each 14 group, you're, you're more likely to get our best teams moving forward. And that's important to me, and it's important to the state. Um, so that's one, and, 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 and so I'm gonna hold off as long as I can, probably till maybe next Wednesday, which is the 14th, to make a decision on if we can go forward with the round robin weekends or, or if they're gonna have to be uh, single elimination. So uh, for the most part, people have been great. Uh, the support's been awesome. People have had a lot of questions. I've spent a lot of time on the phone and, and emails. Keep them coming, we're here to support you and to uh, make sure that we inform you as much as possible. The one thing, and I, and I think we, we sent out something today earlier, the one thing to remind everybody is that we are not going to send you individual emails when your games are scheduled. It's impossible. We are going to put it up on the MSY space website under either State Cup or President's Cup and schedule. So you need to check that every couple of days to see if the game has been scheduled or not. If it's, if it's for a, per, a, a certain weekend, it's going to be scheduled that weekend. So um, it's really up to the, the teams to make sure they check the schedule, not to us, because it's just it's too many games, too many things for us to try to send out a schedule. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. I know there's a limited amount, but I want to thank the ones that are on tonight. Any, any questions for me? I just have a comment. For yeah. those who haven't uh, helped out, uh, with a state cup game it's actually a lot of fun you know uh you don't have to be a board member to do it i see jason on a couple and julio and uh some others dan and i don't think i've ever seen dan volunteer for a state cup game uh, <clears throat> but anyway uh <laughs> two things one it's really a lot of fun and when you do it once and you'll see what i, I mean two we were busy winning them that's why mark let me make that clear <laughs> so it's kind of hard Two, uh, Brad sent out an email just the other day looking for he helpers, not just board members, anyone. And an old team manager from a, a team that, that's not even in State Cup anymore, he wrote back and said, Brad, I can take the game so-and-so. And I wrote back and said, that, that was so cool that this guy who participated as a, as a manager and a parent now comes back and volunteers to, to be the quote unquote board member uh, at the at the uh, state cup game, you know, the the proctor. So I, I and I wrote him and he, and he wrote me back, you know, he said he wish he can do more, but I thought that was great. I mean, that's what I always envision that this association would do is get people that have gone through with their kids and and come back to us as volunteers because they had such a great you know, run at, uh, at doing MSYSA, you know, whether it's ODP, State Cup, all the different things, you know, to come back and give back and, and help us out is a great thing. So that's what, that was my two cents. In all seriousness, Mark, I'll reach out to Brad. That's great. I'm, so, I'm glad I guilted you into it. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. I'm here. Into. Thank you. So anybody have any questions before we sign off? 
All right. So any anybody want to make any comments before we sign off? Um, you know, we have one comment. Someone wanted to know when you're going to trim your beard. <laughs> um, hey, Mark, I, I want to say something in all seriousness, and maybe you brought it up already, but in the last couple of weeks, we lost some really good people. I know you have it on the website about Greg Watson. Um, we also lost Mark Malloy yeah. and Bill Stara, everyone knows, who's been involved in the state for, you know, nearly 50 years. Um, uh, you know, 40 something, um, you know, his wife uh, passed away as well. So just recently because of cancer. So uh, they say it happens in threes. We lost three really good people, you know, even though Bill's moved to Colorado, but I'm still in touch with the family a lot. Um, and obviously Mark Malloy did a lot of what we were just talking about volunteering. Yeah. And Greg Watson was, you know, nationally known. I was doing a program with referees through DC United and uh you know <laughs> that was um that was tough for a lot of people in that community that yeah, really that, those were shockers touched a lot. Yeah, yeah. That was saddened by the news uh watson was you know around for so long and uh he did so much for the referees that it, you know it's i don't I, it's kind of hard to continue on without him seeing him around he was just such a good guy and Mark Malloy was on our board for a long time. He really was instrumental in doing a lot of great things for the board, uh, for MSYSA for years and years. And, uh, you know, he was instrumental in, in uh, doing our deals with Adidas. We were with Adidas for years and years. And Mark's the one who, who negotiated that deal. And uh, uh, the team that he manages went last week to the Dallas Cup and won the championship, which is amazing. And they did it for Mark, which was even was an incredible thing for them to do. And, and I don't know if anybody knows anything about Dallas Cup, but uh, it was a really competitive week and, and they pulled it out and won the championship game. So uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty cool. All right. No matter, no matter what anyone says, Watson was the man, yeah. not, sure, not Sherlock Holmes. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. For some reason, that don't get it. I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> Man, Mr. Watson. <laughs> These guys are too young. Trish was a little kid back in those days. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it at all. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, Jason. What club are you represent? Um, I have a, uh, I coach a team, a travel team on uh, Avid. Uh, and I also am the commissioner for LaBelle Soccer Club in, in uh, Allegheny County. Cool. Hmm. Well, well, thanks for joining us. I'm currently in sunny San Diego, though, if you can see him. Uh -huh. What are you doing out there? I am working out here for a year. Uh, I'm in the Army, and uh, we got mobilized out here to to help with the Southwest border mission. So. Oh, good luck. Appreciate your service, dude. Yeah. So I just, I jumped on the night cause uh, we're, you know, we're kind of a, a, new, a younger club and I'm looking, looking to grow and stuff. So I will uh, definitely be reaching out to uh, uh, Nathan as you know, I feel that Western Maryland is a very underserved community. Absolutely. Um, and, we, no. The struggle, the big struggle we're having right now is field space. We don't, we can't, we don't have field space to, to adequately supply the man we have. I mean, we're, we're almost to the point now where we have to turn kids away because we have nowhere to play. Exactly. Well, Jason, if you we build- to help you. Even though you're army, Jason, we need to help you, man. Jason, if you build 20 artificial turf fields in Cumberland, I'd be happy to bring the cup there. All right. <laughs> and I, 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 I said, it's a great location, you know, between Morgantown, Hagerstown, it's, it's a centralized location for a lot of people to be able to travel to. It's just, yeah. they, uh, it is a football, it is a football and baseball community and you cannot break their minds from it. So maybe you can bring the army Corps of engineers over there to build those fields for it. <laughs> yeah. I moved, uh, I actually moved there five years ago from Cincinnati and it was a completely different, uh, experience as far as youth sports. So should yeah. we assume since you're in San Diego, you can't help us with state cup. 
<laughs> no, not no. Sorry. Right. All right, maybe next year. Next, right. who else is on here? Who's Jay? That's Jeremy from Severna Park. Oh, how you doing, Jeremy? Good. When it, what game, what state cup game are you going to take on? Uh, well, I'll probably show up to my oldest president's cup game oh. this weekend. So <laughs> between the, between the four other games that I have to coach. Uh, yeah. So Julio, what game are you taking? What's quick? You want to help? You want to do a state cup game for us? Yeah. When, uh, yeah. You have it scheduled. Yeah. Yeah. They were perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Brad's going to send you the schedule. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I'm, I'm here to help you guys. That's that's what it is, you know. I appreciate it. All right. Holy, Holy yes, sir. Did you, get, did you get my message? You can bring two spectators per player now. Oh, really? Like a high school? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, we, we, we raised it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you very well, much. You're welcome. I know, I, know oh, that that Lynn, I know that Lynn sent me an email about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's great. Okay. Does that, count? Does that also count for Montgomery County? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Can, there, can, there can only be spectators in Montgomery County, no players. Yeah. So you can bring as many spectators as you want up to 50. Yeah. Ridiculous. All right, guys, I'm done with you all. Sergeant, have a good time in San Diego, man. Keep us safe. Guys, see you on the next one.